Please be standing. Almighty God, we pray for your blessing upon this council, help and prosper its work for the advancement and benefit of its people, so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Please be seated. Manningham Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri Walrung people as the traditional owners of lands and waterways now known as Manningham. Council pays respects to elders past, present and emerging and values the ongoing contribution to a rich and appreciate the cultural heritage of Manningham. Council acknowledges and respects Australia's First Peoples as the traditional owners of lands and waterways across country and encourages reconciliation between all. Council also acknowledges the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse cultures and backgrounds. Well, I welcome all members of the public who have joined us uh, in person and online to observe tonight's proceedings. I'd like to advise that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the gallery, public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your voice and or image is broadcast by council. As with all council meetings, we are taking questions from the public and encourage you to submit your questions in accordance to our normal practice. As we transition back to in-person meetings, we will continue to take questions from members of the public who do not feel comfortable in attending the meetings in person. In these circumstances, our CEO will read out the question. A response will be provided where we have the information at hand. If we're unable to provide a meaningful response, we will take your question on notice and provide a response in writing. We will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one item or issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing through the normal channels. Council meetings are conducted in accordance with our governance rules, and I will introduce each item of business as listed on the agenda, calling it by number and reading the title. I will then call for a mover and a seconder of the motion on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on any item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions. Item number two, apologies and requests for leave of absence. And there are no apologies. Item number three, notificate, prior notification of conflict of interest. And there are no notifications of conflict of interest that have been received. Councillors, would anyone like to give a notice of conflict of interest? Great. Item number four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? Councillor Diamonte. I move that the minutes of the council meeting held on the 22nd of February 2022 be confirmed. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chen. I second, this. I second the motion. Thank you, Councillor Chen. I'll put that to a motion. All those in favour? Carried unanimously. Presentations. 5.1, acknowledgement of Jane Anu, coordinator of Warrandyte Pottery Expo. Well, on behalf of Manningham Council, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognise Jane Anu for her role in initiating and managing the Warrandyte Pottery Expo for over 20 years. It's wonderful to be able to have Jane here in the gallery today to receive this. Jane is handing over the reins of uh, this event, which has become a Warrandyte institution, to fellow potters Rosemary Iron and Janice Keane, who will ensure that the event continues as a prominent event in the calendar of potters across Victoria and Australia, and I think actually the world. Jane will still play a major role in the event, organising guest artists and music for the weekend. Since the humble beginnings in 2001, with 24 potters, Jane has grown the expo, expo each year that now features around 100 of the best Australian potters each year. Every three to four years, the expo has also featured guest potters from France, UK, New Zealand, India, and uh, the latter of whom even brought their stone wheel on the plane to Australia to be able to demonstrate traditional techniques and methods. 
see um, artists, but um, it has not affected uh, the the expo at all, one bit. But in fact, it's just grown, hasn't it? So the fact that a number of French potters regularly meet under the informal banner of the Australian group is testament to the cross-cultural links Jane has been able to forge through the expo. The inclusion of artists' workshops, demonstrations, talks, presentations, and meanwhile, to have a been key in attracting all levels of audience and artists, from those who haven't touched clay since high school to amateurs to student potters who need advice on setting up studios, through to professionals who have benefited immensely from the connection with and advice from their peers. The expo has been a has been a springboard for these artists to hold exhibitions and undertake other opportunities in Australia, including exhibitions at Manningham Art Gallery. And more broadly, the Expo has served to forge strong connections and collaborations in the artistic community of Warrandyte. On both sides of the river, and this has in, uh, eventuated in another artistic uh, endeavours that Jane has produced with and for the community, and such as more recent, the outdoor photography exhibitions uh, in the area known as Wongong Willem. Beyond that, what Jane has achieved through the Expo, those at Council who have worked closely with her would acknowledge Jane's positive attitude, tenacity, clear thinking and drive, dedication and professionalism. When it comes to planning and creating arts events, along with her commitment to the community and the arts and ceramics industry more broadly. Thank you for all you have done throughout the years. The Expo is an amazing history and a bright future ahead. This, as a gesture of appreciation, I'd like to present you with a small gift, Jane. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, it's fantastic. Beautiful. Would you like to say okay. a few words? Yeah. Okay, yes, it has been 22 years of the Pottery Expo. I think you've covered nearly everything there. <laughs> it was great. But it did start with humble beginnings and it was a grassroots effect. But, but it's grown and it's grown so much um, that now, yes, it's too much for one person. So it's great to have these two new people coming, stepping in, but it gives me the opportunity to continue with the areas that I love, which is the international bit. And so I intend to, when we are allowed, to continue with that international connection and bring potters from around the world back to, um, to Warrandyte and to Manningham. So that'll be great. And of course the music, the local music team. So I have not retired. I'm just taking a step sideways and letting these two other people take on the main role of it and I get to do the fun bits. So <laughs> it's really good. But thank you Manningham very, very much. Okay, thank you. Absolutely delightful. And how wonderful that we could present that to you in, in, uh, in person, Jane. Much appreciated. So, moving along with some more good news. Item 5.2, Excellence in Place Naming Awards, Wongam Willem. Councillors, on the evening of the 10th of March, I, along with council officers, attended the Asia Pacific Spadical Excellence Awards where Council was awarded the Excellence in Place Naming in the naming of Wongam Willem. This award is fantastic recognition of Council's commitment to reconciliation but also to the work Council officers Deb Nock and Stacey Robinson who, for, who over a two year period worked closely with Elders Auntie Doreen, Garvey Wandon, Auntie Gail Smith Auntie Julianne Axford and the Wawandri Wellrun Corporation and the broader community to officially name the park Wongam Willem. This naming process demonstrated the positive collaboration across the community to recognise and celebrate First Nations history. We are also grateful to have had the support of the Geographic Names Victoria, who nominated Council for the award to guide us through the naming process. I'd like to also thank the Lions Club of Warrandyte, the Warrandyte Historical Society and the broader Warrandyte community for their support and contribution to the process. Stage two of the uh, park upgrade is currently underway and with a new play space due to be completed mid-year. An official opening 
uh, of the event of Wongong Willem will be arranged to celebrate the new public space and the naming of the park. So congratulations to all officers that have been involved. And so from council to the organisation, I present that to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Public question time, item seven. Are there any questions from the public? There are no questions, ma'am. There are. Oh, sorry, apologies. S item six, petitions, 6.1. Petitions supporting Melbourne's water request to remove the SBO1 from Hillcroft Drive properties. Do I have a mover? So move, Madam Mayor. Councillor Main. Do I have a seconder? I second it, Madam Mayor. Councillor Goff. Councillor Main. So I need to read the motion. Uh, so I move that the petition with 18 signatories from residents of Hillcross, Hillcroft Drive and a single resident from Fernbrook Way, Templestowe, Supporting Melbourne Water's request to remove SBO1 from Hill, Hillcroft Drive properties be received and referred through to the appropriate officer for consideration. So I think it's fair to say this is a, a win for the residents groups uh, on Hillcroft Drive who were very disappointed when Melbourne Water came in and applied flooding overlays to more than 30 properties. Um, and then after a lengthy campaign led by uh, two of the residents there, in particular Paul Harris and Vincent Tester, um, Melbourne Water have come back with a fast track planning scheme amendment proposal to whittle down the number of properties that have the flooding overlay. I think it's the 15. So uh, it's sort of more than halving and the residents who've signed the petition, the 18 of them are saying just do what they're asking council at the April council meeting. So it'll come to us uh, in a month's time. We'll consider what Melbourne Water is requesting. Um, can't foreshadow what will happen, but um, uh, I think this issue is about to be put to bed and we're all looking forward to that. Thank you. Councillor Goff? No. Okay. Uh, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously passed. Thank you. Let's go to seven. Question time. Public question time. There are no questions, me. And we'll move on now to item number eight, uh, admission of urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Item number nine, planning permit applications. There are no planning permit applications. There are no planning, planning permit Applic applications. <laughs> item 10. City, city Planning and Community, 10.1, Advisory Committee's Terms of Reference. Uh, do I have a mover for the Officer Alternate motion? Um, Mayor, I'd like to move an alternative motion as to what appeared in the papers, and I probably should read the whole thing out, I think, just to give it context. So it's that Council A endorses the standard Terms of Reference template for these Advisory Committees, and B endorses the terms of reference for the new Gender Equality and LGBTQIA Plus Advisory Committee, the Multicultural Communities Advisory Committee and the Health and Wellbeing Advisory Committee. C endorses the public exhibition of an expression of interest for the Gender Equality and LGBTQI Plus Advisory Committee, the Multicultural Advisory Committee, the Health and Wellbeing Advisory Committee and the Manningham Disability Advisory Committee. And this is where we divert from the papers. Uh, and D appoints Councillor Lightbody, Councillor Law Remain and Councillor Diamante as the Councillor Representatives on the Gender Equality and LGBTQI Plus Advisory Committees with Councillor Lightbody appointed as Chair and Councillors Lang, Conlon and Councillor Stephen Main as the Councillor Representatives on the Multicultural Communities Advisory Committee with Councillor Lang appointed as Chair. And an additional point E, requests officers repair a report for the May Council meeting on the creation of a sports and recreation advisory committee, including the preparation of a draft terms of reference using the standard terms of reference template. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor I Lang. second the motion, Madam Mayor. Councillor Lang. Councillor Main, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So after an exhaustive um, review process, we're getting towards the end of uh, settling on our committee structures for, for the balance of this uh, 
this council term. So we'd already done some juggling with some uh, some new uh, uh, some changes to the youth advisory committee uh, through through tonight's process. We're settling on uh, the new committees that I read out before, including advertising to the public in terms of who will um, who will join those advisory committees. Um, and, we're, and we're naming the councillors who will be serving on, on those, uh, those committees and then we're adding a, a point E that we'd like the officers to prepare a report looking at the creation of a sports and recreation advisory uh, committee using the same template as the other uh, uh, standard template that we're endorsing tonight. So advisory committees are very important uh, for councils because they provide um, formal uh, engagement with key stakeholders and communities across a range of areas, whether it's the open space committee, uh, which is not mentioned tonight, that, that's already has been set in place in train for, for close to 20 years, um, whether it's the sustainable design um, committee that looks at planning issues or whether it's these committees that we're looking at uh, tonight. I think it's really, really good that we're explicitly moving to an LGBTQI plus advisory committee and similarly a multicultural communities advisory committee. The first time we've explicitly set up advisory committees um, for those, uh, those two communities or areas. Um, the additional point we talked about tonight is sort of it's a bit more back to basics, I guess, sport and recreation. But uh, I think we felt that uh, it is a big area um, where council has a lot of engagement, and uh, it might, might might well be good to come up with a similar model where you have maybe every two months or every three months you have a meeting um, with community representatives who are expert in that area, and you can just have an exchange of ideas. <coughs> it is important to note that none of these committees can make any formal decisions. So they're not uh, fully delegated uh, decision-making committees. So all they, all, they, all the most important thing for them to do is to advise council, and make, maybe make recommendations to council, but inform council laws and officers through really good round-the-table discussions, uh, you know, over, over multiple hours, might be two or three hours, um, where you get into real detail, you have external presenters, so it is a way of locking in engagement with key stakeholders on, on important areas. So I think we've had a, every council should have a look at their committee structure. When we first looked at our committees, um, the advice came in that we were uh, relatively underdone compared to what some councils have, who have lots of committees, planning committees, and all sorts of different committees. So we've made some, some minor expansions here, uh, but we certainly don't have as many committees as, as some other, other councils. Uh, who might have uh, you know, library advisory committees like I know Burundara has set up in the last few years. So I think these are good. It's good that the, uh, the councillors um, have stepped up. I look forward to um, Councillor Lightbody uh, chairing the LGBTQI plus advisory committee and Councillor Lang for stepping up um, with the new multicultural committee. We haven't uh, resolved on, on, on who would be populating the potential sports and rec advisory committee, but look forward to the report coming back from the officers to the May Council meeting uh, on, on how the precise structure of that final committee for this term uh, may operate. Thank you. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Main did a good summary of our advisory committees. I just wanted to add some details to um, the new Multicultural Communities Advisory Committee, which in the report um, is abbreviated as MCAC. Um, I just wanted to add that the, um, the MCAC is about strengthening the voice of people from diverse cultural backgrounds when engaging with council and supporting um, the community to be inclusive to all Manningham residents. I've personally really enjoyed our strengthening Manningham forums um, with representative leaders from all multicultural, um, with, from most multicultural communities and truly look forward to having all things Manningham viewed um, from their perspective and making inclusiveness um, more than a slogan, but actually an action that we all do. I just wanted to bring in last night's um, Strengthening Manningham Forum on International Elimination of Racial Discrimination Day. And the key takeaway that I took from that um, was forming relationships and friendships with each other is vital. So to overcoming the hurdles that we face in the journey of life, uh, especially for those who um, have migrated or immigrated to Australia, um, having people to do life with is extremely important. And when people don't have um, or can't find the answers they need, they come to council and it is important that we do life with our residents and communities as well. As humans, we were all created to be in relationship and friendship with others. 
And so no matter your skin colour, your eye colour, your hair colour, or what country you were born in, when we are together on Australian soil, our human decency is essential. Treating others with care, kindness and respect are basic human rights, and we all deserve that no matter where we are born. I just wanted to add that this report also looked at a template for these advisory committees um, and that it was a more uh, standardised approach for the committees. Um, however, flexibility is required with each advisory committee to run according to the committee topic, the um, committee members and also the community's needs for best practice and that was all acknowledged in the report. I'd like to commend officers on a coordinated effort in response to these new advisory committees and um, also looking at our current committee structure and having them standardised too and looking at the corresponding terms of reference. Thank you, fellow councillors. Thank you, councillor. Any speakers against? Any other speakers? Councillor Lightbody. I'm really excited to be chairing the new Gender Equity and LGBT QIA plus advisory committee, which will go out shortly, as um, previous councillors said, for expressions of interest. Uh, for those in our community who are passionate about helping these communities to join. I look forward to working with the future committee to investigate how we can support both the progress of gender equality and the support of the LGBTIQA plus community, both through our plans, programs, and also through advice on facilities and the services that council does provide. Uh, this new committee, although having been part of motions in previous meetings, I think it's important to mention where this has come from. And I would also like to acknowledge the previous members of the Access and Equity Committee, which provided perspectives from many groups, including these. Um, however, it was the view that we needed to have more in-depth conversations and connections with all groups. And as such, tonight we're also endorsing the terms of reference for the new Multicultural Communities Committee. And I'd also like to acknowledge the Disability Advisory Committee and the recently started Youth Committee, which had its first meeting recently. Uh, these are all issues very important to me, and I'm very pleased that we're making this next step. Thank you, Councillor Outbody. Any uh, further? No? Let's put that to a vote. Those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 11, City Services 11.1, Footpath Priority Program. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I second the motion, Madam Mayor. Councillor Lang. Councillor Chen. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And as we all know that the footpath is a vital infrastructure is particularly important for the mobility of families with young children, people with disabilities, and older people. Footpath supports health outcomes, particularly with increased residential densities in our urban areas. Many residents may notice the increase in footpath construction works throughout the municipality as a result of the introduction of local footpath program and the increased funding allocation. For example, in the 2021-22 financial year budget, Council allocated 3.54 millions for footpaths and sure paths with additional $250,000 compared to previous year. It is not always necessary to have footpaths on both sides of every street. As long as there is a safe and continuous path for people to get to where they want to go, therefore the priority is to construct footpaths on one side of the road where there is no footpath. In other high-profile locations, such as shopping precincts, schools, bus stops, and along arterial roads, footpaths, if footpaths suddenly stops, people will need to turn back, find another route, or cross the road, which may be dangerous. These kinds of problems will discourage people from walking in the area. Also, a missing section in the footpaths can make a whole area or route difficult for some people, such as people in wheelchairs or pushing prints. These locations may warrant footpaths on both sides of the road. 
So the assessment criteria in this uh, attached agenda contains uh, a full pass, a local full pass program that consists of the assessment criteria such as social impact, pedestrian safety, environmental impact, and economic and social impact. Multiple requests by members of the community for one pass can also elevate the priority. The attached is the example of Tucker's Road assessment, which ranked the top of the full pass assessment program. Tucker's Road is an important local link that carries tra traffic in Temple Store and services schools, including several primary schools with over 1,100 students, the Holy Cross Center, Serpol Tennis Club, and all users of Serpol's community reserve. If I remember correctly, Madam Mayor, the local community in the past submitted a proposal and a petition for footpaths on both sides of Tucker's Road. Tucker's Road upgrade has now commenced in March 2022 and is anticipated to be completed by early 2023. So once completed, it will achieve the greatest benefit of the local, for the local community. So I ask our fellow council support for the recommendation of this, uh, uh, this report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chin. Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Chen. I just wanted to um, I just wanted to say that I appreciated that officers have established this standardised criteria in um, in which to um, assess and rank footpath priorities, um, so that that is clear. Um, especially as that can come through our public transport network, it can come through our bicycle strategy, but it can also come through requests from residents. Uh, they can all be assessed against that same criteria that Councillor Chen uh, mentioned and then ranked accordingly. Um, there are definitely um, steep and narrow roads where pedestrian safety is a concern and um, customer requests are present. So a footpath priority program is an excellent initiative. Um, connecting our footpath network is important and invaluable to our residents to travel from their hometowns and to their neighbouring suburbs um, with accessibility and safety. The design of these footpaths um, connections and the material used under is to consider the urban design principles as stated in the report and the green wedge management infrastructure plan will need to be prioritised for the balance between urban environments, natural area, areas with the footpath into infrastructure that is required as stated in the report. I just wanted to say that the um, footpath priority program aligns with our council plan of keeping people living in Manningham or working in Manningham healthy, safe, resilient, connected and, exclusive, um, and inclusive. I also wanted to acknowledge that it aligns with our Victorian state government's um, objective of a 20 minute neighbourhood. The 20 minute neighbourhood initiative involves creating accessible, safe, attractive local areas where people can access most of their everyday needs within a 20 minute walk, cycle or local public transport um, trip. Councillor Chen um, spoke about the criteria. There was just a few that I also wanted to highlight um, that footpaths might be um, prioritised in areas where an existing unmade, uh, unmade track has formed. Um, because there are high traffic volumes in that area. And then there also needs to be the consideration of the impact on the environment, weighing up the required tree removals that, to facilitate a new path. And of course, the earthwork impact that is required, such as retaining walls. In summary, the fourth footpath priority program means consideration is given to pedestrian safety, strategic significance of individual paths within the network and constructability when prioritising these projects. And I commend officers for the report. Thank you, fellow councillors. Thank you. Any speakers against the motion? Any other speakers? Councillor Laura Main.
Um, yeah, just quickly to add, I'd like to agree with my fellow councillors. Footpaths are one of the most fundamental, visible and simple actions the council can implement, especially after the impacts of COVID. We understand more than ever the importance about being able to walk easily around your neighbourhood, whether this, whether this is just accessing PTV or other services or just going for your daily exercise, your daily walk. Um, and I'm just confident this policy considers all the factors as listed by my fellow councillors properly. And I'm excited to see all new footpaths to begin to be built and to then use them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Main. Any other speakers? Councillor Stephen Main. Yes, I'd just like to congratulate the officers and councillors in 2018 who dumped the uh, res <laughs> residents must contribute policy with uh, drainage and footpaths. Uh, there's been an absolutely noticeable step change in the rollout and delivery of footpaths since we stopped lobbying and arguing and asking for money and we just got down to business and said, building footpaths is our core business and we're just going to deliver it. We're not going to ask individual residents to write a cheque for every project. So it was a great decision and certainly around Templestowe where I live. I mean, my, my parents have lived in, in the same house since 1969 and this is the biggest change in footpaths they've seen in 52 years, in the last two to three years around Templestowe, whether it's Serples, uh, whether it's McLaughlin, whether it's... Uh, um, other uh, footpaths heading down to Templestowe uh, Village and there's, there's a footpath about to start opposite the Tempe pub. I mean, it, it's Omar Street's going to get done. It is just amazing. Um, and I just think that the community you know, are really happy to see this and I'm just so pleased that that decision was made and now that the dollars are being allocated to this important program. Thank you. Any further speakers? Was that, no. <laughs> Let's put that to a vote. All those in favour? Unanimously carried. Thank you. Item 11.2, Capital Works at Risk Projects and Corrective Actions. Do I have a mover? Uh, Mayor, I'd like to move an alternative motion, which yes. I'll read, uh, that Council A note the Capital Works at Risk Projects and Corrective Actions report, and B requests officers further investigate sports netting projects which could be brought forward in the 21-22 capital program up to the value of $500,000. Thank you, Councillor Main. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Lang? I Council second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Stephen Main? Okay, so uh, I guess at the start of the year in, in last year's budget, we, we were quite bold, councillors, along with the officers in, in forecasting a record $58 million capital works spend in 21-22. Um, we'd never been over 50 before, um, and so this was a, a significant step up, uh, which was always going to be a challenge, but I think has proven to be a particularly challenging in the context of COVID, uh, where you've had uh, staffing issues with, uh, with well, at every level, with officer level, contractor level. Uh, you've had contractor availability uh, being quite difficult. Uh, and then you've also had uh, cost blowouts uh, on projects because of the, the, the spending boom in particular, um, driven by all the stimulus payments by governments, uh, plus uh, the global supply chain issues and, and availability of, of materials. So all those things have conspired to, to provide a challenging environment to del deliver a record capital works program. Um, and we had spent $14.5 million up in the first six months, but the report notes that we're still budgeting to spend 86% of the 58 million um, and uh, we do have 18 projects at risk um, and some of them I think for instance Jumping Creek Road we budgeted to spend a million and we're probably going to be carrying forward 850,000 with the, the SRAMS oval number two the the modular pavilion uh, the 1.83 million dollar budget will be carrying over 500,000 but in that one it's you know it's not a problem at all because the project will be finished in August so it's not as if it's been delayed for, for years it's just it's going to take until the end of August to deliver the final project and I'm sure the cricket and the footy club will be thrilled others we've had lots of complexities for instance around the Everard Drive drainage program we had budgeted to spend 1.1 million on that and we're carrying forward um, 700,000. But the officers have been quite flexible, um, knowing that there's been some carryover uh, potential. So, for instance, the miscellaneous buildings budget was only 425,000. We've already spent 716,000. So it's good work by the officers to, to get out there, look at our uh, hundreds of buildings, and actually do a few small projects and spend more money. Similarly, with resurfacing of roads, the original budget was 3.5 million. 
We're now in this report noting we're probably going to spend four million. Uh, the one little tweak that we've done uh, with the alternative motion tonight is to propose a spend of up to 500,000 on netting, uh, which goes around our sporting oval. So that's netting for both uh, safety, and I, I, I saw a wind skiing get smashed at Doncaster Reserve in, in the middle of a cricket grand final uh, two weeks ago. Um, and it's also a, a sort of a, a, a usability of the facilities. Um, probably close to half of our goals, our football goals, have nets behind them. So when you do goal kicking practice, you're not constantly running into the car park to retrieve the balls or you're not kicking balls into houses. Um, and so the, the councillors tonight, uh, after some cons consultations, have, uh, have made a, a requested the officers spend up to half a million on sports netting projects, which might deliver five, six, seven, eight new projects, whether it's uh, Warrandyte Reserve or, or Bullion Park or, or Dominey or, or Coleman, where there's a fence and then there's a massive drop down. I went there yesterday for the first time in South Warrandyte. It is terrifying. If the ball goes down there, you'd break a leg recovering it. So. We're not saying where, we're just saying we think this is a shovel ready, easy to deliver, it could be delivered in the next three months. Uh, procurement efficiency from seeking perhaps five, six, seven or eight projects in the one tender. Um, and given that we are looking at an underspend um, and, and a carry forward, that this is one little area where we think, um, you know, given that we just had our biggest ever spend at Petty's Reserve, putting netting around most of it, the new soccer facility which will be opening shortly, that some investment to keep up many of our other reserves with the new standard we've set at Petty's uh, is something we can afford to do. The safety issues are serious, and, uh, and this, this, this is something where we look forward to the officers um, uh, potentially doing this little tweak uh, to the budget and, and hopefully delivering uh, some new visible uh, netting uh, before the end of the year so that the, the, foot, the rest of the footy season can have you know, better facilities across the board, across all the wards and with the different clubs. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lang. Uh, thank you. I think Councillor um, Main did a very thorough report there. Uh, um, I just wanted to add that I, I'm also um, impressed that I realise that there are some jobs that capital works jobs that have been held back for many reasons. But I am also impressed that the um, communication and engagement process of our capital works has um, significantly improved or been made um, more thorough and how that um, the Capital Works project delivery, delivery will now better align with our community engagement policy as well, so that there is deliberate engagement on the major um, strategic documents and that being um, you know, Capital Works programs. So I just wanted to add that detail. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Any speakers against? Councillor uh, Chen. Uh, first of all, I just wish to clarify that uh, I support a sports nest uh, that, uh, that, uh, that under the uh, up to the value of half a million dollars in uh, and bring forward into this financial year as a, uh, as one of the capital works program. But as the report uh, duly mentioned about the the drawback, why we hold back is because of various reasons. For example, the global supply chain, we all understand what's happening is not only uh, the materials, but also a lot of uh, household items. Uh, they, they, are, uh, they, are, uh, they are not available because of the global supply chain issues. Also staff shortages, including contractors. Also the contractors availability is a big issue. And I have very limited knowledge about sportsness, I suppose uh, I would imagine that it's not only about purchasing nets, it also includes that we have engineers or contractors to install, and that will probably include some, uh, uh, involve some uh, in engineering works, which probably Councillor uh, Andrew Collin, who is also an engineer, can uh, clarify that issue with me. But apart from that, and in order to spend the half a million dollars to expand the greater community benefits to our community, because every, as I always said, that every dollar counts, I would propose an alternative if I can, and uh, to include other items, for example, uh, the open space furnitures programs, the street furnitures programs, and that can give uh, 
uh, our offices more flexibility to see whether they can be brought for, uh, bring forward in this financial year. Thank you. So you're moving an alternate. Yeah. So I need to have a no, no. amendment, sorry. You're moving an amendment, so I'd need a seconder for that amendment. Would that be? Yep. Yeah, so are you willing to accept that mover? No. No, okay. So that being said, it then goes to Councillor Chen. We, we have to move Yeah, you need a seconder and then we can debate that. If the, then it goes yes. So do I have a seconder for Councillor Chen's? Councillor Conlon. So I'm going to then ask Councillor Chen to speak to speak to that. As I have said that uh, I fully support sportsness, but the main issue is how we can spend the money and to get that spent within these financial years. Bear in mind that it's only three months uh, left. So we just want to give the officers more flexibility to investigate any further projects they can bring forward within this financial year. Okay. So... I was just going to say, was there actually, was there wording? Sorry, I just wanted to clarify the wording, perhaps, might be. The wording remained the same, just after sports netting projects, comma, open space and street furniture projects. That's it. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Conlon. Open space. I think you're talking about open space furniture. Um, yes, and also street furniture as well. Open space well. and open space. Oh, yes, should be open space furniture and street furniture projects. Probably that will be easy to understand. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So, Councillor Collin. As, as we've heard many times from Councillor Chen, uh, a large proportion of our uh, people make the, uh, their, main, their main use of our facilities is actually walking or running. And, uh, and I think we do need more uh, park benches effectively. Um, and I think this is a good opportunity and I appreciate, uh, I think it's a good opportunity to sort of yeah, send a message that that's what this council is about, about back to basics, make sure we get this stuff right. Uh, make our open spaces and streets great, as well as uh, us sporting, um, our safety around sporting areas. Thank you, Councillor Collin. Can we just make sure that our mics are on? Just... Sorry. It wasn't? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, you don't have to say it again. No, no, I think, I think we got it okay. Yeah. So I'll just check that we got that for the audio for, for those that are viewing online. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Conlon. Yes, thank you. Uh, speakers against. Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, I rise to speak against this amendment and uh, just to get things, I suppose, clarified on this. In ba basically, this is a report to Council and it's been amended a couple of times and I'm getting very concerned about the way in which things start moulding and changing and changing things at a Council meeting. Uh, when, when we're through the council meetings and haven't had good discussions on this beforehand. I'm putting that aside. Madam Mayor, the 30th of June is a date in a calendar. Only important to if you are an accountant, where you earn your living from it, or the tax department, where you gain your living from it. They're the, they're the only people that care about the 30th of June. It's an end of a financial reporting year. It doesn't mean that we've got money that just because we didn't spend it. Just imagine if everybody, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, any dollar that you saved up during the year, if you haven't spent it by the 30th of June, the tax man's going to take it. That doesn't, is not what is happening to people's money when they put it in, in rates. People pay money in rates for us to do things in our community. And we don't just throw it away to the next nearest thing just so we can spend it all. I've worked in companies, I've worked in governments like that. 
got to spend this money by the 30th of June, otherwise we don't have it next year. So what happened is we wasted the money, and I don't want to see council waste. Our citizens work too hard to pay our rates, and not for us to just spend it on the latest idea. This started out with a particular thing, which I wasn't super happy with, but I do support now, it only in the fact that it limited to something that we did know was a need and we're putting it in. Do I like the way in which it came up? No. I don't like the way it came up to the meeting, but I will take it. I will take the way it came up. I don't like the way it's expanding now because it's just putting our council into mayhem. It's not duly considering what the things are. And by the way, you might say, and other things. But you see, the thing is, some of these things cost a lot more than people think. It's not like a little net that I'm going to go fishing with. They've got to be put into the ground. Now, this council, this report is about a great job that council has done over the most difficult time in our history. And just this year, this financial year, as we thought we were going to get back into the workplace, we were locked down again. And then we were locked down. It wasn't until Christmas that things started to come out. And then we're still sort of locked down with some things and there's demand and there are prices. There are all sorts of other reasons. And we've still done 90, over 90 per cent of what we'd planned to do. And the carryover, it's either carried over into projects that are multi-year projects that are going to be spent in the next few years or it's going to be finished fairly soon afterwards because we couldn't get it done in that time. And there's no lie in this. And we don't have to increase our capital works budget. We can have a line in the next year's capital works budget, items to be finished off from previous year's budget, and don't advertise that higher figure. Council can be truthful. It can say our new capital works budget is this new one. So I'm not happy that amendments go around a table and start increasing and increasing and, and doing the decisions here, because I won't be part of that. Thank you, Councillor. Any speakers for the motion? Any other speakers? Yeah, this is the amendment. Yes, Councillor I'd Stephen speak Main. Against the amendment. I mean, um, so I just think that the current amendment, as it's worded, has has clarity. So it's a very specific program. It's a very specific amount of money. You can visibly see there's only a certain amount of ovals. Uh, you can see where we've got netting and where we haven't. We know where the windscreens have been smashed. We can see where it's dangerous at different parks. Uh, we can see what other councils do. On, on something like street furniture and open space, uh, I mean, that, that just could be anything. We've got th you know, 300 pieces of open space. So it just, it just widens the scope incredibly. So when I crafted this, I was looking at something that was shovel ready, that was easy, that was deliverable in potentially three months. Um, and we've just procured you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of netting at Petty's. There's only a couple of contractors. Um, you can get scale by doing five or six ovals in one go with a, with a half a million dollars. So I agree with Councillor Goff that we shouldn't have you know, political or councillor driven amendments. I think if this was a, if this were a, a more appropriate way to do this amendment would have been point C and not to blur it with what we had, to actually come up with, and yes, you know, an extra 300,000 on street furniture. If that's what you want us to consider, I'd be open to that. But this is coming in and crowding out a, a clear need that we've been discussing ever since, uh, for many, many months now, when we were promised that we could look at this in the so-called mid-year budget review. Now, this is the night for the mid-year budget review. Uh, the officers have come up with some extra spending, such as miscellaneous building. Now, I think you could, under miscellaneous building, you probably could build a few, a bit of street furniture, pop, perhaps, if you wanted to. I'm not sure how tough the definitions are. Point of order, Madam Mayor. What's your point of order, Councillor? The relevance to, to this particular meeting, I, I thought this motion was about a report to Council on the the uh, capital works progress and what was and wasn't going to be finished in the year. That is correct, but um, it's, it's, it's not a, really a point of order. And I guess the, the, the final point I'll, I'd just like to pick up is the comment about it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if you don't spend your budget. Well, some, some people like to keep their promises. Or we're just another bunch of over-promising politicians who at the start of the year say we're going to do all this and then at the end of the year say, oh, sorry, we only did 86% of it. Um, so this is a way of dealing with the 
underspend with an identifiable need we've been talking about for many months, and that's why I hope councillors can support the amendment as originally proposed. Thank you. That was a speaker. That was another speaker. Any other speakers? Oh, Councillor Laura Main. I'd also just like to say that although I cherish our open spaces and would love to spend further on them, um, for the importance of clarity for this point, doing one job well and actually staying true to our previous council discussions, I'm also against the amended motion and prefer the original councillor alternate motion. Okay. I'll put that to a vote. You wouldn't, is there closing? No, you can't close them. Yes, didn't think so, no. I'll put that to a vote. Those in favour of the motion? Amendment. Amendments, sorry. That's uh, Councillor Chen, Councillor Conlon. Those against? Councillor Laura Main, Councillor Jeff Goff, Councillor De Monte, Councillor Lightbody, Councillor Lang, Councillor Stephen Main, Councillor Kleinert. Lost. We'll go back to the um, original Councillor alternate motion. So I've got a mover, I've had a seconder. Councillor, has it carried? No, we haven't. We're going to go debate it now. So, going into the debate, Councillor Main has spoken to it. Any speakers against? Sorry, um, I'll speak against it. Yes, Councillor oh, Conlon. Oh, Councillor Lang, you spoke for it. Okay. I just make sure. I know. Okay, I've sort you. of lost track. Yep. Yeah, I had to. I had to think out loud. Yeah. All good. No problem. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. It's interesting that we just had got voted down a, an amendment. Councillor Colin, can you just check your... Yeah, it's on. Yep. You can't hear me? Just turn it a little bit, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. It's interesting that we just <laughs> voted down an amendment on the basis of uh, words like, you know, um, dates, we don't have to spend by a certain date. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be adding extra stuff in to this... Uh, to this budget, uh, yet this I mean, the uh, motion as proposed by Councillor Stephen Main basically does all that. So that's why, if if we are if we are genuine in our conviction about the previous vote, then I would I would argue that uh, it's, it's a it's, it'd be strange to vote for this amended motion. Thank you, Councillor Conlon. Speaking for the motion. Nobody to speak. Just to speak on it. To speak on it. Yep. Thank you, Councilor Madam Mayor. And I will rise. I will rise to speak on this particular motion. And no, I'm not very happy about the fact that these come in the last couple of days on expenditure without going through anything else other than uh, emails and whatever. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm old-fashioned. Call me old-fashioned if you like. But I think we are far better off if we go through proper processes, refer it on, and get some get some actual agreement and motions on these things, not at the last minute, not in the last week, not put under pressure. And I, I really do not like it. Now, I was happy to sit down and, 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 and go along with what's going on, but no, Ms, uh, Ms, uh, Mr Conlon, I'm not happy to do that anymore, and I will be voting against it, because I don't believe that we should be driving our budget through motions at the last minute through something here. And I will stand up for that, and I will defend my position of good governance in our community. Madam Mayor, I don't believe that I can vote for this either. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Goff. Any speakers for? Any other speakers? Councillor Main, would you like... Ah, uh, yes, you can close. Um, yes, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I guess I'm personally scarred by uh, four years in a row at City of Melbourne standing up and promising more than 120 and always finishing 20 or 30 million short. So this is a small way to try and close the underspend by $500,000. Uh, I picked something which was needed and I think potentially deliverable. I remember when Kevin Rudd was deluging cash on councils during the GFC, it was resurfacing tennis courts, which was the easy thing to do. But I think this netting proposal um, is even easier. 
I know there's been some ovals, like for instance, Bull Land Park, which should have been done 10 or 15 years ago, in my view, and, and maybe shouldn't be done now because of Nella. But I do think that, that uh, a $500,000 spend, given that we've got so many ovals, given that we've set such a great standard at Petties, and given that the footy season is starting, our clubs are battling, struggling for volunteers. Do you really want to force parents, like I used to do on a dark night, to stand in the car park and stop footies hitting balls when goal kicking practice is on? I mean, surely with $96 million in the bank, we can afford to do an extra $500,000 on this. Councillor Conlon? I'm, I'm done. Yes, sorry, Councillor Main. Yes, he's done. <laughs> that probably helped. Okay, we'll put that to a vote. Those in favour? Councillor Stephen Main, Councillor Lang, Councillor Lightbody, Councillor Laura Main. Those against? Councillor Chen, Councillor Conlon, Councillor Goff, Councillor De Monte, Councillor Kleinert. Failed. Do we have so an alternative we'll, motion? We, we go to, it's lost, so we'll go to the. Um, original uh, officer motion, Capital Works at Risk Projects and Corrective Actions. Do I have a mover for the officer? I'll Councillor Goff. No, Mayor, I'll move the officer's motion. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Chen. If you'd like to speak to it, Councillor Goff. I reserve my right, no, no. Thank you. Councillor Chen, no. Any speakers against? No. I'd just like to speak uh, to it. Um, uh, so obviously, me, I'm disappointed um, with this outcome. I thought we'd reached a, a consensus. Uh, obviously, we hadn't. Um, uh, so I think that uh, you know, I, I just hope that we can be serious in the future about keeping our promises on capital. Um, otherwise, next year we should just say we're only going to spend 40, if that's our ambition. We talked about other potential things, such as grant, uh, doing capital grants for future projects. Uh, which would reduce the carryover. Um, I think there was probably some obvious ones we could have done there, and, and they got wound back uh, after discussions. Um, so, councillors, I just... Uh, Can I raise a point of order? Point of order? What's your point of order? Um, I do think, Councillor Main, that what you said may have been misleading. I don't think it's not um, carrying through on promises. I think the report's fairly clear on the reasons why the full project load couldn't be delivered. I don't think it's about not following through on promises. I just think I'll accept things that. are against it. I'll accept that. The report clearly clarifies. Thank you. Councillors, was that the report refers to a $6.1 million carry forward. The amended motion would have made that a $5.6 million carry forward. So there was an opportunity um, identifying a need to reduce the carry forward, uh, to deliver a greater proportion of what we promised, uh, but we voted not to do that, not to intervene when we're aware of smashed windscreens, we're aware of safety issues, we're aware of other councils with better facilities than us. We've been talking about this for months. Um, and uh, I just hope that over the balance of this term, we don't continue to be extremely conservative, to hoard $96 million of cash, one of the biggest cash piles in the state, and to not even try to crank up our capital spending when proposals are put forward, to continue the culture of saying no to capital spending projects that the community wants. Oh, order, Madam Mayor. This is not, this is not about that. It is, this, this motion now is about to note the report from the officers. I regard those as irrelevant in it, but I will speak to the motion now. Okay. I, 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 if I could just finish, this is about Capital Works at Risk and Corrective Actions. That's the name of the report. An alternative corrective action was proposed and, and defeated, yes. And I'm just saying that, um, does anyone else, I mean, we had an alternative corrective action, which was, which was uh, uh, furniture and open space. Um, that's but, but, but that's, we're not doing that either. No, so, <laughs> can you please Sorry. interrupt? So we're not, we're not reaching, I mean, we're very, I, I sort of feel, quite inert as a council, that unless the officers say to do it, we just, that's all we do. So when a good idea comes up where the people who are elected actually propose projects that the community wants with enormous surplus cash sitting there with an underspend coming at us, having only spent 14 and a half million of 58 million in the first six months to not even agree to spend 
another half a million on, on six or seven nets to make our community safer and to help our supporting clubs. Um, I just think, I'm just, I just hope we, we, we don't continue being so conservative in hoarding these record levels of cash and not delivering a decent capital program. Thank you. Any speakers for? Madam Mayor, am I allowed to speak now? It's a motion. Uh, it's, your, it's your reserve the right yet? Yeah, you can, Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This debate is now going in different circles. We cope, we cope with the first, the first issue. But my issue is that uh, councillors' rates and our money are not individual councillors' possessions to put out on their favourite projects and push it forward and push it through. Councillors do have a right to promote certain things, bring it to council, bring it through the office and, and get the generation for that. Now the quick is, you know, I can get it in and it's me and my and I and I'm hearing a lot of that from Councillor Main. Point of order, but, Madam Mayor. That's disparaging. Well, it was it's I. It's all about me and I and my. Can you just stick with the topic? I am sticking with the topic, Councillor Main, Madam Mayor, because That's he topic. used the words I. I thought this was a good thing. It was my idea. I thought these things. Okay. All of it was I, 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 I me, me, I will me. Ex I, I will okay? accept. And council isn't about I, I, I and me, me, me. It's about us and our community. And believe me, I will sit here, and that's me personally, and consider things not on the part of what I want and what I, what I, what I and we as a group think is the best, and to put it through a proper process rather than coming in at the last minute is the better way to do those things. If a motion was to say, look, if there is any money and there's a shortfall, can we consider looking at building some nets? Totally different to actually forking out the money at a whim. How did we come to 500,000? Oh, I thought it was a good amount. We don't have to spend the money this financial year. It is not important. The fact that we haven't let our community down we're actually still going to do those things and we're spending it on where we've told the community we were going to spend it on. We never before tonight said we were going to spend it on anything else than what we've said we're going to spend things on and for the things that we've got into plans for next year. And people can look to our forward, forward budgets and our forward capital works plans to know what we're going to spend our money on. And if it was one of those things, we could swap it over and do it. So, Madam Mayor, I believe that uh, we, we need to... I thought this motion has become a really big motion, and uh, the further it's gone, the more emotion that I'm getting into it. I think, uh, you know, it really, we need to settle it down now because this is not making council look good in its process. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Gore. Any other further speakers? That was closing. Let's put that to a vote. Those in favour? Councillor Chen, Councillor Conlon, Councillor Laura Main, Councillor Goff, Councillor Diamante, Councillor Lightbody, Councillor Lang, Councillor Kleinert. Four. Against? Councillor Stephen Main. Carried. Item number 12, experience and capability. There are no experience and capability reports. Item number 13, Chief Executive Officer, 13.1, uh, Risk Management Strategy and Risk Management Policy review. Do I have a mover? Councillor Chen. I move that the recommendation be adopted. Thank you. Seconder? Councillor Romain. Thank you. Councillor Chen, anything to? Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Manningham City delivers more than 100 different services to our community. We also face many challenges, issues, and risks, such as uh, increasing oper operational costs and community expectations, digital transformation, cybercrime, climate change, and the COVID-19 pandemic. A risk can prevent council from achieving our objectives if we do not respond and manage these risks properly. There will be significant consequences. Therefore, council has the responsibility to manage risk and associated opportunities in all areas of Council's operations. Risk management strategy and risk management policy are key elements of Council's management, risk management framework. The risk management framework is a fundamental corporate governance tool to deliver a well-governed Council and the delivery of our four-year Council plan. 
The review of the risk management strategy and policy is the result of extensive input provided by the Executive Management Committee, individual council officers and management, council's internal auditors, and the Audit and Risk Committee. The two documents have also referenced against the relevant guidelines and framework. We want to use the components of the best practice models to suit the needs of Manhattan Council. The comprehensive review has identified where improvements could be made to meet current and future needs of value protection and value creation. Key changes to the risk management strategy include higher profile given to risk management benefits, clarity to the risk appetite st uh, statement, risk tolerance is added in the strategy to provide boundaries for risk taking. The strategy also develops a new tool to advance risk management cultural maturity. Key changes to the policy include public value is added to the risk consequence, consequence category and promotion of the benefit of risk management to create and protect value. A review of the, risk, uh, of the strategic risk uh, register was also conducted. Only minor adjustments to two of the 14 risks has been made. The Risk and Audit Committee monitors and critics the process of review of the register at least every six months. Attachment 3 is a copy of the current 14 strategic risks. The reviewed risk management strategy and risk management po policy provide assurance to the management community that strategic risks are identified, assessed, treated, and monitored and report back to Audit and Risk Committee and Council. The two reviewed documents are attached to the agenda and for endorsement by Council tonight. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Councillor Laura Main. Thank you, Mayor. With the plethora of risks that Council consider, whether this be the impacts of climate change, COVID-19, tree management, and so much more, it is so important that we have a secure risk framework in place which reviews which, the, which this review is aiming to achieve. As Councillor Chen has done so well at covering the key changes to this review, I'd just like to thank our um, Executive Management Committee and our Audit and Risk Committee for their inputs and thank the officers for their work on this item. Thank you, Councillor Main. Any speakers against? Any other speakers? Let's put that to a vote. Those in favour? Unanimously carried. Item 13.3, informal meetings of councillors. Do I have a mover? Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to move that the recommendation be adopted with the following amendment. Attachment 8, strategic briefing session, 1st of March 2022, be amended to include an additional dot point under items discussed, which reads, Bullying Park Pavilion Design. Thank you. Seconder. Councillor Lang. Madam Mayor, I second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Conlon. No. Okay. Councillor Lang. No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Let's put it to a vote. Those in favour? That's unanimously carried. Item 14, urgent business. There are no matters of urgent business. Item 15, Councillor reports and question time. Councillors, does anyone wish to provide oh, a report or raise a question? Councillor Lang. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would just like to let councillors know that last month, the Warrandyte Cricket Club held an event by the name of Pink Stumps for the Cancer Awareness and Research with generous donations from the Warrandyte businesses who donated prizes and donations for this incredibly worthy cause, a whopping $13,759.35 was raised. Councillors and Manningham community, whether male or female, breast cancer can affect us all. Yes. We learned at Pink Stumps from a doctor special speaker that males can suffer breast cancer too. Therefore, everybody, have regular mam mammograms and stay safe and look after yourselves and your family members. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lang, for your healthy message. Good. <laughs> Councillor De Monte. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
So, um, Madam Mayor, I'd like to congratulate a member of our Livability Innovation and Technology Committee, Bob Sharon, for receiving. It is on. Yeah, for receiving a leading technology industry award. So, in late February this year, he was um, Bob Sharon, who is the founder and chief innovation officer of Blue IoT, was awarded the Australian Computer Society Digital Disruptor. CXO Disruptor of the Year Award, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I've actually been to those Australian Computer Society Digital Disruptor Awards and there are thousands of people that compete for these awards across, across the nation. So it's indeed a great honour. We are very lucky to have him as part of our LIT committee. Um, and I just congratulate Bob and I congratulate Blue IT on such such an achievement. Thank you, Councillor Damonte. Yes, it's great, and it's great to have uh, that uh, intellect um, being on one of our committees, which is great. Councillor Chen. Yes, Madam Mayor. Last Saturday, a No Rules Market was held at NC Square, which Madam Mayor was there as well, by Yara Foundation. The, the event was supported by Manningham Council's Community Grants Program. From speaking to local Persian shop owners and visitors of the market, I got to know that every year millions of people celebrate New Rules, the Persian New Year. It was a vibrant and very successful market day. There were traditional New Rules ma uh, merchandise, live music, cultural dance, and there was also a half scene table set up. And the half scene table represents nature with seven symbolic items with, uh, whose names start with S in Farsi. And in Victoria, Manningham is the municipality with most Iran-born residents in our city. So Manningham Council is also the first local government in Victoria to become accredited welcoming city at the established level. Therefore, No Rules is a celebration of our diversity and it's also a reminder of everything we have in common. So I wish everyone a healthy and safe new rules. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Yes, I've never quite seen um, MC Square so busy and thriving. It was incredible. Uh, Councillor Laura Main. Thank you. I'd just like to congratulate all the volunteers of the Warrandyte Festival for all their work and all their persistence in getting the festival going after years of cancellation due to COVID. Um, it was so much fun. Many of us councillors were there. Um, there was great weather. It was just, and it was also very, very nostalgic for me. That they still have everything going it's from when I was a kid. Like it wasn't that long ago. Um, even the <laughs> even the slide, which I'm so surprised they actually get it going. But I'm so glad it's still there. And it was just so much fun. And I'm really like to con congratulate all the hard work that was put into that. Lovely. Ditto, Councillor Main. Councillor Goff. Madam Mayor, I just want to come here tonight and, and echo a, a sentiment that uh, a number of people are expressing to me at the time uh, and uh, what we can do about it and, and who we can do it with. And the, the, the thing is the maintenance of roads, the maintenance of weeds and the graffiti that is around. I want to specifically draw attention to the Eastern Freeway uh, and main roads around Manningham and the parks that aren't necessarily council parks, but they're, they're uh, uh, state government parks, with tagging, unkempt, road surfaces are cracking up. No one seems to be doing anything about it. I, I just wonder you know, how we can raise it. The state government don't seem to care, and it's not just Manningham. You drive around everywhere, it looks like a war zone, or the aftermath of one. In, shouldn't say that these days, but after a war, because things are out of control. The surfaces are cracking and no one seems to be worrying about it. Everyone's driving by and not paying attention. The graffiti is staying up for ages. So I'm just wondering if we can get a report back uh, to an SBS or something of how we at Manningham can promote the clean up of our area because it's been a few years now and it's getting worse as it and it's, I'm not, I, I did ask the last week about council programs, I've got an answer for that. I'm talking about state government responsibilities that are not being done in our area. Absolutely. Thank you, Councillor Goff. A report will come to SBS. Yes. Councillor Conlon. 
thank you. Yes, I had the privilege of um, being able to um, make up for the fact that I, the Warren Dyke Battle of the Bands wasn't held last year and um, got to hand out the awards on the weekend and that was fantastic to be down the river. So I'd like to give a, a great shout out particularly to the judges who uh, they were there for, I was there with them and they were writing note down notes for every single band and, and rating them um, and there was 11 bands, it was great and there was a whole lot of young bands, it was great to see. Um, also to the organisers of that uh, of that particular battle of the bands, which is just part of the Warrandyte Festival, but it's a lot of work goes into that. So uh, they, they did a great job. The bands that uh, we had, um, there was a number of winners there. Um, I'll give a shout out to the Mayor's Award, which was Ride to the River. There were three locals who um, had this acoustic sound, and it was it was quite it was really great. They had some great harmonies. Um, so if you ever get a chance to see them, if you see them on a billboard, go and see them. Um, the stewards, who are young, like this this street, this group of um, kids from a street over in Hurst, Hurstbridge that got together during COVID, and they they got a band together. They they got third prize, and yeah, they were um, they were um, they were pretty high energy too. They were really good. Three a.m. already. They were really they were great. Um, they were. A, almost a professional band, I'd say, the way they came across, um, more mature than the, a lot of the other acts, but um, they, they had it all together, they came second. And the first plot prize, and also the People's Choice Award, um, went to a band from Templestowe College, um, Crackers and Kool-Aid, they're called. So, uh, and and they will get, um, as part of their prize, they'll get to record one of their um, one of their singles. They'll get a day in the recording studio. So, um, and so it's, uh, it was it was a it was a very uh, it was a humbling moment to be able to uh, tell those guys, and they were so excited. So uh, yeah, so congratulations to the, everyone who partook. In or partake, partook, is that a word? I don't know. Who went along and had a go. Participated. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you. Well done, Councillor Thank Connor. you. Thank you, Councillor Conan. Yeah, quite a great, great initiative and hopefully not the last time, but uh, <laughs> hopefully is the inaugural of something great into the future. Really good. Great. Uh, Councillor Stephen Main. Uh, so two questions. I'll ask them uh, back to back. First one, uh, dogs off lead appear to be doing quite a bit of damage to the oval at Tedajani Reserve and the Bull in Templestowe Footy Club is spending about 150 a week on sand filling in the holes. They have four senior teams this year so the ground will be more heavily used this winter than at any time in the past decade. Could officers advise whether any of the ovals, uh, any of our ovals are designate on lead areas for dogs and whether this is an option at Tedajani even if just for the winter months? Alternatively, could local laws potentially intervene to reduce damage to the ovals and could officers also look into permanently digging out some of the larger holes and replacing it with cut turf? The club has been advised that they are responsible for declaring whether an oval is safe, but they're not allowed to replace any of the turf, as that is the domain of council. The stopgap sand solution is wearing a bit thin and the club would like some assistance from council to resolve the situation. Could officers take a look at this? Uh, my second question uh, goes to the Councillor Bulletin, which we get each Friday. So when a, when a, a councillor makes a request for information from... Uh, the officers, it often comes back to the councillor and then is included in the councillor bulletin. I'm wondering if we don't have a lot of transparency into the mayor's diary or calendar or meetings. So I'm wondering if, and I've spoken informally to the mayor, I'm wondering if we can get a summary of the mayor's activities added to the councillor bulletin, um, so, so we've got more transparency, like when a councillor asks a question and everyone gets to see the answer. Uh, there's not sort of equivalent transparency around, uh, you know, the mayor's had a meeting with this community group or that community group or that sports club. Um, and also whether the mayor would be interested in using this particular item uh, to report back to councillors on any meetings you might have had with community groups or, or whoever to share some of your activities with us. Thank you, councillor. I'm oh, happy to take, take both of those questions. Uh, in relation to, and, and obviously defer to the mayor as well for the second element, um, First question, absolutely. Thanks for raising it to our attention. We certainly made aware of it through local laws and also through our um, city services area. So we'll look at, it'll be a combined approach, obviously, in terms of the way we look after facilities, but also, um, yeah, try and get a bit of local laws um, blitz where we can, where we have got issues. We have done that from time to time. We're certainly happy to pick those issues up um, through clubs as well. And it does help having officers go down from occasion, just having a presence down there as dog owners are down there and provide them with a bit of information. And generally that, that does the trick for us, we find. So we'll certainly have a look at some of those hot spots In relation to um, information, um, uh, in, in relation to the Mayor, um, I'll certainly defer to the Mayor. The bulletin itself is an organisational um, 
bulletin. So that, that's something from me as the CEO to you as councillors to update you all on, on organisational activities and matters of interest and to give you information that you might request. I'm certainly um, happy to have a conversation with the Mayor and obviously councillors can have a conversation as well about how you might like to um, you know, um, approach that, uh, that communication suggestion. Thank you. I think, like you've said, it's a discussion for the councillors and perhaps with full transparency, maybe other councillors that are meeting with groups without the notice of other councillors might want to transparently share that information also. So, it's, I think, a good further discussion to be had with all councillors offline, not in a council meeting. So, that being said, confidential reports, item 16. Oh, sorry, Councillor Lightbody, you, was there anything? Just making sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. And uh, item 16, uh, confidential reports. There being no confidential reports, I declare at uh, 8.21, the meeting closed.